Hey guys, in this video we are going to show the right way of using Next.js because I see many developers using Next.js the same way they are using React which make it unuseful to use Next.js. The main purpose of Next.js is the search engine optimization. So in this video we are going to show the right way of using these functions to fetch data from Sanity and in which case the best function to use. So let's create a new repository for this project. Let's call it next sanity fetching and we are going to make it for now private and we are going to use the main branch. So let's create it now and let's copy the link. and clone it inside this folder now let's open it in our visual studio code and let's create two folders one for next.js for our web app and another one for sanity that will contain our data contents and let's open the terminal one for next and one for sanity let's navigate to next folder and create next.js app and in sanity folder let's initialize sanity application This is how to set up Sanity project. First you need to install globally Sanity CLI, but I did this step already. In your case you need to copy this command to your terminal, but in my case I'm gonna skip this and start from here. So let's execute here Sanity init. If you are not logged in already it will require you to log in. I'm gonna log in using Google. Now let's close this and go back to our terminal. And we will choose a new project. And we are gonna give it new name. This is the first mistake many developers make. They just choose the default and it is public for anyone. Anyone with your project ID can access anything in your database. For example, the users list and everything, the orders and everything. And this is not what we want. So we will say here no. The name is not that important. You can give it whatever you want, even a production or any name. But I'm gonna give our data set or our database a new name. And here I'm not gonna make it public. I'm gonna choose a private and after that we are gonna create token to access this database so no one can access our data without our permission and here press enter to create the project in our sanity folder we're gonna choose here clean a project without predefined schema next app has been already created so let's start it and in the main folder let's create a new folder to ignore the installed modules not to be added to our repository here let's add node underscore modules and also this hidden folder in os let's open now the next js app and here's the main page but we are not gonna focus on this we are gonna create our own pages now in sanity let's create our schemas we are going to create one for product and another one for users let's just start with the product The name is a product, the title will be product, the type is document and inside this document we need fields, 
the first field is the title of the product so the name is title and the head title will be title type string and let's add another field name is a slug we use the slug here because we need it to be found easily by search engines the type is a slug and we will add here options the source of the slug it will be the title this title and the max length of the slug is 96 so let's save it and copy it for the user and let's update the names this document here we need to add name for the user and we don't need a slug because we don't want search engines to find our users we can use here the auto generated id to access the details of the user and let's save here and go to schema we need to import these schemas here let's import the product and let's import the user and now we need to pass them here in this array now let's start sanity we are going to check these configuration locally then if everything is working correctly we are going to deploy it to access it from anywhere let's open this link and let's log in using the same account and here are our tables let's add here new product let's give it title product one and generate slug and publish and let's add also user let's call it user one and let's publish it our configuration is working correctly now let's deploy it to sanity cloud let's split here new terminal and use sanity deploy the name of the domain next sanity fetching it has been deployed let's check the link and here is our tables in the cloud let's try adding a new product let's call it a product 2 and generate the slug and add a new user user 2 and publish now we don't need the local one let's close it and let's close also these two terminals and now we are going to start next.js functions one by one let's first start with server side rendering so in next.js let's create utils folder to add sanity client configuration inside it a new folder sanity and inside it a new file client.js we need to install here new bucket so let's split this terminal we are inside next application not inside sanity and this package is sanity client let's import it here and let's add the configuration but first let's silent this notification from ESLint let's copy this and add it to ESLint configuration let's add here array and add it to the end of this array let's save and close it and now let's go back to add our configuration we will export a new object let's call it sanity client and we will assign it the function we just imported from sanity client and here we are gonna pass the project id insanity 
but first let's create dot env dot local file and let's add here some environment variables and let's call the first one sanity project id these environment variables only exist on server side not on a browser and we can get the project id from sanity let's go to sanity manage and here's our project this is the project id let's paste it here and we need to add also the database or the data set we called it e-commerce so let's add it here and let's also add the access token let's create a new one from api and let's give it name let's call it next app we are going to give it editor rule let's add editor to the name to recognize it and let's save now let's copy the token and paste it here let's save and restart our server and let's add them here in the client configuration first one is the project id and let's add the data set api version let's give it some date let's add now the token and here i'm gonna make false for caching because in my case here i need to check the changes how to be reflected in our functions in next.js because if i add here true sanity will make cache in all the servers and when we request the new information we may get the old one but the cache is always good for speed and quick response because there is copy cached in all the servers around the world so let's go here with false now let's close all of these but also here we have notification from ESLint let's also copy this module to silent the linter and let's add it to the configuration insanity now let's go to pages and create a new folder for product and inside it we are going to use server side rendering and let's create a new files one for all the products and another one we need it for the details of the product we are going to use here slug to extract the details and let's call it here product and the other one let's call it a products and now let's add our function here get server side props this is a special reserved function for next.js we need it to be async because we are gonna communicate with sanity and this function is from type serverless functions that means it is executed on node not on a browser and it is safe environment you can put here any code you want and the client can't access this code i see many developers they add the functionality inside the api folder and they just use this function to communicate with that api which is a wrong way because you need here two http requests one for your api and then api needs to communicate with sanity you create the functionality in your api folder only in case you need to provide api for third party or you need to send the request from the browser from client side not from server side and we are coming to that case in client side rendering for the security reason we can't expose the token in a browser so we have to use api 
what is inside this function is executed on server side and here what is inside this component is executed on a browser in client side it is not safe you can test that by adding console log inside the function and inside the component and you can see what is inside the function is console log on server side and what is inside the component is console log on a browser now let's add our query here we need the information in a product table and we need only the products that have a slug and also published that means it is not a draft and here we need all the fields the title and the slug but we need to change the slug to be the current property inside the slug object because it is object contains two properties we need only the current and now we will retain props object inside it our products this is the way next.js works and now we are going to pass this prop into our component now let's loop through our products we will receive single product and we are going to retain a link from next.js let's import this link component href it will be our product details page and here we are going to pass the slug in the params and because it is loop we need here key let's make it the product id and let's fix this and here we need to add anchor element as it is required by link component and let's add here the title of the product we need it to be easy we just need to show the functionality and what are the differences between all of these functions and which one is the best to be used now let's try to access a products page and here is our products we brought them from sanity now let's create the single page of the product let's copy the whole code and paste it here we are going to use the same function get server side props we need here in the query to add another condition we need only one single product and that product is the product with the slug in the params so slug.current equals slug this with dollar sign is just a variable or content holder we are going to pass the value of this holder in a second it is the value of the slug in the params and we need only one element not array now let's pass the value here this is slug we receive it in the link of the page and it is passed to this function using the context this is the name of the variable or as it is called by next.js dynamic routing so we will extract this slug from the context.params and we will pass it to the query now we will retain the product let's change the names here and the prop and let's delete the loop and the link we need here only the title let's try to test it we have a problem with the prop product let's go back now oh, we forget to change here the products let's update it and save and now it is working this way is a very slow it is the same as php when you send the request the server manage everything from collecting data then building the page and send it back to the client this is a longer process the client side do nothing it is all the style it is just good for search engine optimization i would never use this way i just showed it here to see all the cases and to compare them 
you can't notice the speed here because there is no much content but with much content you would see that it is very slow because it is not using the caching CDN it is not copying the pages and save them in cache in all the servers around the world it is just saved on the server and you need to go to this exact server to manage all the data and build it again from the beginning there is no pre-rendering in this case let's push it to our github to see the results in a real link let's check the repo now and here is our code and let's go to Verso to our dashboard on Verso and let's add a new project and let's import it from git repository this is our repo but it is subdirectory let's first choose the next JS in a framework and here choose our folder and let's add our environment variables let's copy them one by one and let's deploy now let's check the link and here is our application let's check the products page here's our products and when we click we go to the single page of the product it looks like it is little bit not slow but because there is no much content here trust me on that it is very slow let's try to make update to any of these products let's change the title here publish and let's check if the change reflected there we can refresh and here is our change because it is server side rendering and there is no pre-rendering or caching the information always is fresh so there is no problem with updating the problem with this way is speed and let's check now the search engine optimization let's check the source page this is the content will google and other search engine will receive when they access your link you can see here that our content is here here is our products so this way is good for search engine because in other cases like react the search engine will receive only one div and that is root div there is no content inside it your website will be added in a queue because they need more sources to execute the javascript to extract the content and this will take time and the content they extract from javascript it may not be perfect and your website may end in low ranking in search engines so next.js idea is about seo search engine optimization and this we will see it also in other functions so now let's continue using the other functions now we are going to use a static site generation so inside the product folder let's create a new folder and let's call it ssg and let's copy these two pages and paste them inside it and let's add our changes here we are going to change this function we will use get static props 
the query is the same and also the props we need to change the link here and save and go to the single page the query is the same and the props as well but let's change this function same we will use a static but in this case because it is not just one product we need to generate page for every product we need to show all the slugs of all the products so we need to add here a new function this function will show the slugs or the path of the products it's also a special function from Next.js. Get static paths. It is async function because we are going to communicate with Sanity to bring all the products. Let's use the same query in the products. Let's copy it. Add it here. Change the name to paths. But here we need a special structure. It's also an array, but inside it, an object contains params with all the slugs. This is how it will look. This must be inside an object, and the key of the object must be params. This is for every product. Because Next.js needs to pre-render a page for every product, it is executed only once during the building of the project or the app. And it is not updating unless you are gonna use another ways. We are going to come to these ways in a bit and we will make it perfect in regard of speed and also updating. And here let's certain the paths and also we need here to add full back to be false. There's no revalidation. We will come to that later. For now it is false. Now let's check that locally. Let's change this to SSG. And here's our products. And a single page of the product. In local environment or development environment, there's no difference because it is all rendered in server side. There's no pre-rendering, but the difference is in a production mode when you deploy it to a vessel. Let's now push the changes. Now Vercel will rebuild our application automatically. Let's check the deployment process. Let's go to the project. Deployment. And now it is automatically triggered building. It was triggered by GitHub by our main branch. And here is our commit. Now let's check on our real link. And here's our product. And here's the single page. It is very fast because the page already rendered and it is saved in the cache. Now let's try to update our database. Let's change this product title. When we publish, we can see the only old title of this product. It is not updated because it is executed only once during the building time. But in case of SSR or server-side rendering, we can see the new title. And let's check also the search engine optimization. It's the same as server-side rendering. We can see our contents here. Here are the links and here are our products. The only problem here is updating so the speed is good and search engine optimization is good also but we have a problem with updating there are many ways to solve this problem we are going to show them all and we are going to show the pro and cons of every way until we reach the perfect way so first from settings we can add hook let's go to git and create hook Let's add name for that hook. Let's call it sanity product, for example. And on main, 
let's create that hook Vercel will provide us with a link to trigger rebuilding so let's copy this link and let's go to sanity and add it in the hooks let's create a new web hook Let's give it name to recognize it and let's add our link here. Choose the database and in which action we will trigger this webhook. And regarding which table, we are going to choose here only product. We are not going to use the payload here, but we will need it in the last way when we build our own hook and the secret as well we are not gonna use it here but we will need it later and let's try to update the product title let's go to verso we will see that it triggers a new building here it is and it was triggered by our hook it is not by github but this way is very heavy because it is rebuilding the whole application so if you update many times it will be so heavy on the server the good news it is just occurs when there is update now let's check our link here's our new update reflected here as well I'm not gonna use this way so let's delete the hook here and let's move to the second way in the second way we need to update here this object we need to add revalidate every 10 seconds and also in the single page we need to add it here and here we need to delete this false and add blocking let's save and push it to our github to update our code on Vercel. in this way Vercel will check the update every 10 seconds with sanity so any change you make will be reflected within 10 seconds but the problem with this way that it is always trigger this action every 10 seconds even there is a change or there is no change so it is every time send requests to check if there is a change every 10 seconds let's try to update the title and let's publish if we refresh here it is still 24 but after 10 seconds you will see that it is 25 and here's the update reflected here let's keep this way here in this folder if someone needs to use it and now we are going to move to the third one and it is the best one we are going to build our own webhook the name of that is on demand ISR or in demand incremental static regeneration and the last one it was ISR only without on demand now let's create folder let's call it ISR and let's copy these two pages paste them inside this folder and let's reverse the changes we just created let's delete this and this one and here let's go back to false now let's go to the api we need to create our hook here let's create folder let's call it hooks inside it let's create a product we need here to install new package sanity web hook now let's create a new web hook on sanity 
and let's call it a product web hook on demand. The URL it will be our link. Let's copy it and let's add to it our hook path. It is API hooks a product. Choose the data set, the actions, and the table or the document. And we will send in the body of the request the specific slug of the product because we need to update the specific single page of that product depending on the slug. And here let's create secret because we need it to be secure so only us will trigger that hook. You can add here a very complicated secret but I am gonna make it simple just for testing. Let's save this and go back to the code. We need to add the secret in the environment variables. Let's call it sanity with hook secret. And also let's add it in our deployment on Versal. Let's go to the environment variables. And let's copy it. and add it here now let's build our hook we are going to import this constant it only contains the name of the key of the signature inside the header and we will import this function to validate the signature from the package we've just installed now let's create our handler we will receive the request and the response this is almost the same as controllers in Express and Node.js. Now let's try and catch. In case of error, we will respond with the status 500. With error, something went wrong. And here let's extract the hashed signature sent by Sanity in the header of the request. We will extract it from the request request.headers and we will pass this constant. This is just constant to extract that value and we will make sure that it is a string because it is a sensitive process because we need to rehash and create the signature and compare it. If you want with command and the click you can see the value of this constant. Here it is, it's just a text. You can use this if you want without using the constant. And now let's use the function is valid. We will check if it is not valid. And here we're gonna pass it the stringified body of the request. The signature sent. And our secret. And this function will rehash the content of the body using a timestamp and our secret. And then compare it with the original signature sent. If they are matched it will retain true otherwise it will retain false in case it is not valid we are going to retain a response with a status 401 message invalid request and in case it is success we will extract the slug from the request body and we will revalidate the single page of this product that means rebuilding this page this is the path of this page. And also we are going to revalidate the main page of the products. You can also here console log the slug to see it on the server side. And we will send a response with success status 200. Message product page is revalidated. Now let's save and push it to our GitHub. It's rebuilding our application.
Now let's watch our serverless function or our hook. This is a specific serverless function. We will see the logs here. Now let's try to update. Let's first check the old information. Here it is 25. Let's update it to 26. And let's check our function. Here we received the request. And here is our console log. This is the slug. Let's refresh. Here is the update. It was updated automatically and instantly. But here in the single page, it is 25. Why it is not updating the single page of the product? I will forget to change the link because we copied the pages from the static generation. Let's type it manually. And here is it is updated. So our functionality is working correctly. Let's go also to the code and change it. Here in the link, let's change the path here and let's save it. Now we are going to use a client side rendering. It is the same as use effect in React. You can also use use effect. Or you can use this hook created by Versal. We are going to use this hook because it uses caching. And this way is perfect when you don't care about search engine optimization. For example, in admin panels or managing the user login, logout and registration and other stuff regarding the user. Because anyway, you don't want search engine to show your user's information. Let's use our users table. Let's create here a new folder inside the pages. Call it user. Inside it, let's call it CSR, client side rendering. And inside that one for users list. And another one for single details of the user. We are depending here on ID, not slug, because we don't care about SEO. And let's start by users list. Let's call this page users. And we need here to install SWR. Let's import the hook. Use SWR from SWR. And this hook returns either data or error. Here you pass it a key. It could have been the URL. And this key will be passed to the function, recall function. And you can receive it here. You can use it as link or you can use any unique key. It is up to you. You can receive the link as parameter or you can create the link inside the body of the function. We could have been here communicate directly with Sanity from here. But this is the browser. This is a client side. It is not serverless function. It is not safe. So we are going to expose our token here and someone could hack that token and hack our database. So in this case, we have to use API. Yes, it is two requests, but we have two here because in this case, security more important than speed. So let's create here new folder. Let's call it user. And inside it one for the list of the users and one for a single user, depending on the ID of the user. Now let's create our handler or controller. And add a try and catch. We will send fetch request to Sanity using Sanity client. And we will pass it our query type or the table is the user table. And we will send after that a response with a status 200 and pass it the array of the users. In case of error, we are going to send a status 500 with an object error 
something went wrong let's save this and copy it for the single page and let's update our query we will add here a condition that the id of the user matches the id we received in the request and we need here only a single object not an array and let's pass the value of the id we will extract that id from the request query now let's save and go back to our pages in the main page we need here to pass the url of the ip of the list of the users so it is api user and this hook will pass the url to this function and we will use fetch to fetch that url we will extract the response then we will resolve response to json and the data will be passed to this data here now here we will return with a condition if there is already data we will loop through our users and here we will receive single user and we will retain link let's first add the other case if the data is not ready we are going to show loading and here let's add the anchor tag inside the, the username let's add the href for the link it is user csr this is the api and this is the pages so the link is the path of the page and we will add the id of the user here and the key also the user id let's save here and let's copy this hook and use it in the single page of the user let's paste it here and let's import this hook we need to change the url here it is dynamic we need the id of the user now we are inside the component inside the client browser and we need to access this id so we need the router from next.js so we are going to use use router let's import it Here we will extract it from router.query This hook can be late to deliver the ID of the user So it could be in the beginning undefined And we need to fetch in a condition We need to check that the ID is already here If it is here we are going to fetch the data Otherwise we are not going to fetch the data We are going to pass null This is how this hook works let's rename this data to be user and let's update here in case there is user we will retain the name of the user now let's save and check first let's check locally in our development environment let's go to user forward slash csr it's loading and here is our users list and this is the single page of the user now let's push it to our github and let's check the building process in verso ok our github branch triggers a new building now let's check our real link let's access the users list it's loading and here is our users list and here is the single page of the user let's try to update one of the users and let's check the update it is immediate let's try to change again it 
is instant update is the same interactive as react because everything is managed inside the browser now let's check search engine optimization let's show the source there is no information at all it is just the main div of Next.js and it shows loading this is the problem with this way it is not SEO friendly but in case of users or admin panel we don't care about search engine optimization so this way is perfect in that regard in my opinion the future of Next.js is on-demand ISR and this way CSR or SWR hook if something is not clear about these ways in this simple project don't worry I am going to create soon a real project using these two ways this way and the other way on demand ISR are instant on reflecting the updates let's check ISR again let's update this to 7 and let's refresh it is updated immediately and this is perfect way it is the future of web development because it is caching a static page and it is triggering the update immediately and it does not need a periodic check that's why it is called on demand and it is search engine optimization friendly the content is available here the search engine will not put your website in a queue because in single page application they put your website in a queue because they need more resource to execute the JavaScript and extract the information and the content by executing the JavaScript. In my opinion, these two ways are the future of Next.js and you can only use these two ways in building your applications. So see you guys in our next project.